Well, I'm Sandra Gonzalez Bailon. Um, I'm a sociologist and I'm an assistant professor of communication at the Annenberg School. So right now my research interests revolve around two main areas, digital media and social movements, in particular how online networks of communication help people self-organize and mobilize on a large scale. The other research area is related to public opinion and how we can use online communication to extract meaningful measures of what the public at large. The tools that I use uh, to tackle this, um, these research interests come from network science and large-scale text analysis. And I guess the main theoretical question that motivates my work is how come that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts? In the context of social movements, this means that people can now self-organize um, without a central authority overseeing the whole process, and online networks have a lot to do with that. In the context of public opinion, it means that we can aggregate the signals that people send when they uh, express their opinions online, when they update their um, statuses in online networks, or when they, when they leave comments in the digital versions of their favorite newspapers. We can aggregate all those signals in such a way that we can um, approximate what the public think. So some of the case studies that I have considered in my work on online networks and collective action include the Indignados movement in Spain, the Occupy protests in the US, and also the more recent protests that emerged in Turkey a few months ago. What all these um, protests um, have in common is the use of social media to self-organize, again, in the absence of central organizations. And the one question that I'm really interested in is when you look at the patterns of communication around these protests on a large scale, do we find similar collective dynamics? Um, and if we don't, why not? And what are the implications of those differences for the way in which the movements unfold uh, in time? Um, uh, another project in which I'm involved right now that involves large-scale text analysis reconsiders the question of media fragmentation and reassesses the assumption that media fragmentation leads to more media diversity. And so one of the things that I'm doing with uh, colleagues is we're analyzing the closed captions of about 140 cable news channels um, and we are trying to measure information diversity and potentially bias on three levels, coverage, framing and salience. Um, and what we do is compare is to compare channels on these three levels and also how the information that they broadcast compares to the kind of news that a wider range of online sources covers. And um, contrary to many of our assumptions about how cable news channels cater for ideologically different audiences, we find that cable channels are actually more similar to each other than they are to online news sources, which we think is interesting. And it's um, sort of inviting us to reconsider a lot of the implicit assumptions in, in research around media effects and media fragmentation.